Hi, it's Yash, and uh, <clears throat> this is the subject to why do romantic relationships always fail, right? Somebody asked me that. And the answer is because they're supposed to. Why? Why are they supposed to fail? They're supposed to be so so nice and, uh, you know, supposed to meet our projections and satisfy our needs and wants. Well, that's why they fail. <coughs> because, see, they're... <laughs> We're here to transcend our needs and wants. We're not here to try to find somebody, some imperfect person to satisfy our imperfect wants and needs. You know, the real, the real issue here is um, it's like when we, sometimes we meet somebody and there's some <coughs> natural uh, feeling inside. You know, we just, we, we, we feel drawn to this person. I'm going to talk about why that is a little bit later. And so we feel, we feel this organic love. A lot of times love starts out, starts out organically. But then we have our little designer kit of uh, expectations that we want to get met. That's where the problem is. <laughs> and that, that becomes more prevalent the, the longer we spend time together, especially after we have sex, you see, then our energies are, are intertwined. And now this um, so-called love that we felt, uh, it becomes more, you know, palpable and more strong. We shared, we shared one of the most sacred things you can share with another human being, uh, you know, sex, you, you, you don't get more physically close than you do during sex, at least on a physical level. You can't meet at a deeper point. That doesn't mean there's going to be true love and intimacy there because that's, you know, there's prostitutes and brothels and all that stuff, and that, that's not love. But anyway, so when you meet like that and you already have some organic love for somebody, then it gets even more deep, right? Deep in the sense that you, you want to keep it you're like, man, this is pretty damn good. You know, this is, uh, <clears throat> this romance is a very strong drug. And um, so now here's where the problem is. You're like, I want to keep this love. It feels really good. But I also have my own, my own karma, my own karmic tray with its needs and desires and things that I want to experience. And so I want this other person to do it. Because why not? This is a good deal. I already have a natural organic feeling for them. I already feel some love for them. So now <clears throat> I just got to get them to satisfy all my, my expectations and projections. Because then it'll be perfect. Because if they don't do that, oh man, that's going to hurt. You see? Because I love this person. At least I feel I do or think I do. And so now if they don't do what I want them to do, that's going to be, that's going to, I'm going to be torn, right? It's like, I want to, like, I want to love you, but I need you to do what I'm wanting you to do because otherwise we're going to have a problem <laughs> is basically what, what we're saying. And then the mind comes up <coughs> with all this justification, and rationalization about the things that we want or, or need. That's even a more dangerous word. It's what I need. Um, we feel they're justified and we feel, look, if you love me, then you would, you would want to do this, you know, like what's wrong with you? And the other person, they have, the, they have their own idea in their own karmic tray and agenda of, of the things they want to get met, you know, their expectations and desires. And so then they throw it back on the other person and then there's this feud and then it usually, uh, usually doesn't work and then they, they break up, etc. <laughs> and then they go hunting for the next person to, to satisfy their, their desires and say, yeah, this other person, man, they, they just weren't good for me, you know? I said, well, why were you with them? Well, I thought they were good. That's the thing. You know why it works really good in the beginning? Is because we don't have any expectations. It's free. We're free. It's like you're a living being. I'm a living being. Do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And, but yet there's some organic attraction here so we, we can enjoy spending time together. No strings attached, no expectations. And wow, this flows really good for a while. 
And then the mind comes in with its, like I said, designer kit of, of things that it wants and needs. And then it messes, <clears throat> messes everything up. You know, see, ro- just that word romance, it's, 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 it's very sticky. It just has a stickiness vibration to it, you know, romance. And, um, you know, when I used to think of romance, I think of the, <laughs> the first image that comes to my mind. I've, I've never been too romantic, by the way. Um, I feel I have something better than that, but uh, a lot of women didn't think so. And it's all good. But I feel the the real romance, I mean, not it's not real, but what, the image that I had in my mind about romance is like the guy, he puts the, so the girl's coming in, and then she walks in, there's rose petals going down the hall, and then they get to the bedroom, and I don't know, there's flowers and maybe a, a heart pillow on the bed or something, and then the guy's you know, sitting there with <clears throat> some wine or, I don't know, I, I'm not too good, it's not my field, but anyway, that's, that's the image that comes to my mind, and then, so in that moment, it's real good, isn't it, girl really, girls really like that stuff, by the way, I know you already know that, it took me a while to figure that out, but I'm not, I just, <laughs> I never wanted to do it, you know, I just, for what? Uh, my 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 way has always been if there's some organic connection and chemistry there isn't that good enough do we really gotta you know lather it with all these extra things I mean I don't mind buying flowers or something but if it has to be organic in the moment not because I'm trying to get her to like me I'm trying to romance her and then I can have sex with her see I don't have these agendas man but <clears throat> so this whole romance thing from what I've seen it's it it just feels very superficial. It can feel very powerful in the moment and it can it can feel really good, but how long are you going to keep that up? You know what I mean? It's it it usually doesn't last very long. And it's a setup, you know, it's like a lot of times, you know, I'm not saying there's guys not out there that they're not a uh, guys out there who actually this is coming from a, a a a heart place but a lot of times there it's a it's an angle you know it's a manipulation tactic and a lot of times the girl don't mind being manipulated either because she likes it too so but that's my point it's built the foundation is built on sand for the most part because that heavenly moment can quickly turn into its opposite, and it, and it does many times, you know. Uh, I used to <laughs> speak in prisons and jails, um, and man, those institutions are full of, of guys that had, had done what I just said, you know, and then later killed the person, killed the woman, or, or beat her, or, or something happened. You know, and um, so be careful. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, You know, the the real love, it's unexplainable. Real love, it's like it doesn't, you don't have expectations. You don't have uh, projections for the other person. Even if they come up, you can't really enforce it. It's like your love is too... You love them too much. You just can't put them through this uh, nonsense. But of course, by that time, one has to have grown and matured to the point where you recognize your own little personal karmic tray. And so you, you, <clears throat> you're careful and aware of projecting that onto somebody else. You know, If they can complement that organically, great. But you, don't, you can't put that on somebody anymore. And, and, and you're... You've you've done uh, done enough self introspection to where you can't rationalize it away, you know, like <clears throat> like if um, you see real love, there's no condition. It doesn't matter. Like even even a woman, she can't expect a guy. It, maybe she really wants to have a family or have children or 
uh, whatever. But maybe the guy doesn't, you know. She's not going to, um, she's not going to, if she's mature enough, she's not going to be resentful at that. The love is not going to change. Whether or not you meet someone's projections isn't an indicator of um, if there's true organic love in your heart for the other person. Now, see, that's where it gets... Oh, and another thing. A lot of times, the real love, it's like you love the subtle things about the person. It's not even... Uh, like that romance example I gave, it's not even about that. It's like, I remember <clears throat> when I felt this for somebody... Um, it was just the little things she did. She's not even aware when she does them. It's the little mannerisms, little, just little, little like subtle things, you know, that just, it, I don't know, it touched me somewhere, somehow, you know. And, um, and you don't want to, it's like you don't need a court or a church to signify this contract, to validate it. It's already been validated, like, <laughs> like God already made the contract. It's already there. Now, the thing is, will you... It's like there's a deep matching between you two. On superficial level, you may, you may seem to be total opposite. This is the thing. You may like different things. You may, one may be extroverted, one be introverted. But on deeper level... There's, there's a matching. And you may not even be able to articulate it, but there's a deep respect and trust and admiration and love for the other being. And you don't know where it came from. I'm going to tell you where I feel it came from. But in, you know, on, on the mind can't understand this level because you're like, what, what's going on? This, their personality might seem different. Their sense of humor is different. What they want in life is different, but yet... I don't know, I feel really, uh, I like this person a lot. <laughs> There's a connection here that can't be broke. Those are uh, really special, <coughs> uh, special uh, communions, you know. And we're lucky to even find one, I'll tell you. Uh, if you find two, you're good job. But uh, these things are very rare. I feel... You know, when I would meet somebody, I'm only interested in that level, by the way. I'm not where, where I don't, I'm not interested in having a, a list full of uh, backup partners or, or women that I can call. I don't need, uh, I don't need uh, female energy in an exclusive way, you know. I don't actually like sleeping alone and, and having my own space. And I get enough energy just walking outside. I mean, you can see girls anywhere you go. You know, why do I need to to get one in a c contract? You know, sign here. So we're gonna have an exclusive thing now. You know, I don't. Uh, I've been there, done that. So I can understand if if one. You know, you have to experience that to to. You know, we can't transcend something if we don't know what we're transcending. <laughs> you got to experience something sufficient sufficiently enough. And the more conscious we are during the experience, the more we can. Uh, go beyond it if we just go to sleep during an experience and uh, then we'll just have to keep repeating it we have to really be awake and aware of of our experience and analyze in a in a in a natural sane way so that then we can get the lessons that we were supposed to get from it and then we move on then we can enjoy the experience again but without the pain and hell or attachment is what I'm trying to say but when I first meet somebody these are the ones I just said that I, I, I'm only interested in. Um, and even if I didn't meet any more the rest of my life, it's fine because I've already met a few and uh, it's great. And um, it's not the highest, though. The highest is inside. Of, uh, I touch on that stuff every video, so this video is not about that. It's about uh, why romantic relationships fail. But when I, um, when I would meet somebody, you, you know instantaneously it's like you've known this person for a long time and it's like it's like you start where you left off wherever that was and that brings me to my point i must have met this being <clears throat> and we must have interacted in another life or on another plane or something because how can you meet somebody for one or two seconds 
and you're just kicking it like you like you've you've been kicking it for god knows how long you know you're getting along better with, with somebody you you met in just two seconds better than you've maybe someone else you've been ha- <coughs> hanging out with for 10 years yeah explain that so and see this what this is what makes it it can make it a, a little um uh, difficult or challenging I had my mic cord wrapped around my foot I hope it's okay uh, it's like when you have that level of connection that level of chemistry and then this is the drama and, and you just you you you, uh, <laughs> you don't even you can't even say you want to spend uh, time together you're just together you just you just find yourself together you can't help it you know it's like being with yourself in another form it's it's awesome but then let's say your individual karma meaning your desires and experiences that you came here to this uh, planet and put this human bodysuit on uh, for let's say those things are different than her things you see that creates some uh, friction you know because this is most important is for, uh, for us to experience and um, transcend the things that we came here to transcend. We don't want to waste this life on anything else. This is most important. If within that there's space to enjoy this uh, connection with the opposite sex and experience love, great. And there is space. But the mind wants to say, well, but this should last forever. That's the problem. You say, we can't do that. Because we don't know. We don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know. If, if, if we have kind of different karmic stories, you know, maybe at first it's like this, but then it starts going like this, it doesn't mean the love's any less. It just means, you know, our school of life is, is, is a little different. Our curriculum is a little different <clears throat> than hers, you know. Maybe we start out in... Uh, in junior college together for example but then she wants to be a doctor and I want to be an architect and so it's like okay we got to do our thing so that happens sometimes maybe more more than 50 (laughs) percent but that's another lesson there is to we got to transcend attachment we have to be somehow mature enough to where this love can, can continue to exist inside, but we don't need the physical form with us all the time. And the only way we can do that is when we recognize who we are beyond this physical form. I was writing somebody uh, last night, actually, and I feel he has... <laughs> this is a tough one for some, but um, and nobody will question uh, somebody on this, you know, but I, I do, especially if they're close with me and, and the, the moment is calls for it. A lot of times, so he, he has a couple babies and um, he, uh, he has a lot of attachment with the family, you know, and a lot of times he uses that as an excuse to not do something that uh, he said he was going to do or whatever, you know. So anyway, but he's, he's high level enough to where we can have this discussion, so it's fine. So I was telling him, I said, what would happen if the universe stripped stripped us of this human form of the human body the emotional body the mind took everything off <clears throat> undressed us of all our bodies and all there was left was just pure consciousness in in indivisible invisible pure consciousness right then where am i at where are you at where's the family where's the babies where's Where's anything at? <laughs> it's just consciousness, right? So that's how we started the conversation. And um, <clears throat> yeah, he understood. But it's easy to fall asleep to that truth. This, this, if you ask me, is the primary purpose for um, every human being. Now, most aren't going to realize this. They don't even believe it. They don't even think about it, let alone contemplate and meditate on it. But this is the main thing, is, is for the consciousness to put all this virtual reality software on these bodies, but then realize, realize its core self in the midst of this deep hypnotizing uh, sleep that we undergo when we put these bodies on. See, this thing. So when one starts becoming more aware of that truth, 
you're automatically less attached to a uh, human form. Even, even in those situations where you have such deep love for somebody, but it turns out <clears throat> if the moment calls for it, you're like, okay, I understand. You got to go your path. I'm going to go my path, but I'm always with you. You're always with me. And, and those, that can be authentic. These words can be authentic. But one has to get deeper within the altitudes of their own higher self to, uh, to realize this and to, for, for the, these words to actually be true, you know, if you're in a situation like that. Otherwise, if you're not, then it's just going to seem like hell. And then when the, <clears throat> if we're supposed to break up, we're going to get mad at each other and blame each other. And then there'll be drama and, you know. But then <laughs> we could take birth again in another life. Our memory, memory will be wiped and we'll meet again like, whoa. <laughs> you know, good to see you again. And uh, this is the drama of life. So, I don't know. I wanted to make a, a, a video on that, about romantic relationships. You know, highest relationship, I, I, would, I would call them like a, a holy relationship or divine relationship. Uh, I'll make an, an, another video on that. But in the meantime, enjoy, you know, enjoy, enjoy the romantic relationships. We have no choice anyway. I had to have a few you know, to see through them. I'm not, um, I'm not against them now. It's just something doesn't, uh, I don't know, I can't buy it anymore. You know, it's like the clothes I used to wear when I was a, a toddler. I can't put those clothes on anymore. It's the same thing with the romantic relationship. I've had sufficient experience in that area to where I just can't buy it. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm not on, uh, <clears throat> I'm not in that stage anymore. So, um, some people already know this, perhaps, but you're still you're caught up in the habit of it, and especially when collective society and the movies and, and songs are all promoting it. But there's some deeper knowingness and memories that, yeah, it's not quite true. So then you attract videos like this and, and others that um, your higher self attracts these things so that you can come into the full version of yourself and quit playing small. So I'd have to say these videos are more, more for those people. And... Um, I don't think there's too many of those, but uh, yeah, leave me any comments. Let me know. Let me know what you think, and um, have a good day. I'm late. Okay, see you.